football coach from from the start, the onside kick and the fumble, and then they come right down, get it within the five, you stop them. Just how big was that for the guys to come up with that stop and then the next one? We we made a handful of uh, you know close down in, the, in our own territory stops here in the first half. Um, I can't say enough about how our defense played tonight. They really really did a nice job, and when they were called upon, they answered and and. Uh, you know, 13 points, seven of that was off of a kickoff return for a touchdown. So that's a, that's a pretty solid Milton offense with a lot of athletes and a lot of speed to hold them to seven or six points. It's a pretty impressive day for those guys. And and their only score offensively uh, that they didn't have in that return, they got the ball to start inside the red zone after that interception and personal foul. Yeah, so I mean, it, that was a you know one play, 15 yard pass. Uh, they had a, a, a return and then they had a, we got a penalty on us that put them 15 yards away from the end zone. So yeah, that was their only scoring drive at all. And so, you know, we, we talked about and, yeah, about playing fast and playing aggressive and trying to match their speed with as much speed as we have. And uh, our kids, you know, they rose to the challenge. Great, great effort for those guys tonight on defense. First half, you guys really couldn't sustain a drive and then Baron Claw found Kloffenstein and Kloffenstein <laughs> followed his blocker and all of a sudden you guys were back in business. Yep. Uh, Reminds you of last year's game where it was nine nothing, and all of a sudden we get Alex Dalk for a, a 83 yard touchdown. You know, I, I kind of joked with Kevin; he couldn't quite find the end zone on that one. I don't know how far of a play it was, but it was quite a quite a 70, far one. 79. 79. Um, but you know, that's just a, it was a broken play, and we have a quarterback that has some legs and probably throws better when he's on the run than when he's standing still. And then uh, Kevin is, is a very heady athlete who recognized the play was broken and turned up field and and got himself wide open, so you had two athletes making plays when it mattered. There in that second half, uh, some big plays too, Kevin, with that with that big fourth down catch that kept <laughs> that drive alive, and, and going with a sneak uh, with two yards to go, just how, how did that whole drive develop? Well, you know, it's just uh, it's a blur right now to me. I'm trying to think of everything that transpired, but I do remember the uh, the, the fourth down catch, and Kevin just, it's, a, it's an underneath route that we put in last week, never got to it, and we put it on the back burner for a while, and then we just grabbed it yesterday and said, guys, you know, they, they vacate the middle here. You know, we're going to have to try to just be able to do this play if we need to. We ran it once in practice, and uh, but Kevin made a great snag out of the air on fourth down, kept the drive alive, and, you know, at that time it was still 13-6 to six, six Milton. And so, you know, found the way in the end zone with a, a, a sneak and then, you know, made a stop and drove down the field to put us up. It was just quite a quite a fun fourth quarter there. And and another broken play. Alex was able to to avoid the defense again and threw downfield. And Charlie's man fell down. And Charlie was able to come up with a big 40 plus yard catch. Yep. And again, that's that's Alex being an athlete back there. Um, Milton had some really really good defensive linemen. And uh, you know, we try to man for man block them. Sometimes those kids are going to beat our kids. And a couple times they did. And, uh, you know, but fortunately, Alex was able to escape that rush. It's got to be frustrating for a defense alignment to get through, and here he is, and then the quarterback scoots away. Um, but heady enough to find Charlie. Charlie made a nice play, and that kept that drive alive. You know, there was, there was some real big plays, and we've been calling on our kids just, just to make plays when your number's called. And, uh, you know, and, and there's some times during the year where we weren't quite able to do that, but they're starting to figure it out now. And, and uh, we've got a lot of contributors tonight that made some real big plays. It seemed like in that second half when you guys needed a play, somebody stepped up, whether it was Ryan Hughes on a screen or a draw up the middle, and he laid the big hit right before the first down marker, or Charlie with the boot on the punt, or just anybody, uh, Trent Weisbro in with that touchdown run. Just yeah. It seemed like when, when asked upon, the guys really all stepped up. Yep, I think uh, you know that, that fourth, that, that last series that Milton had exemplified everything. You know, on third down, they threw a beautiful pass to a receiver on an out route, and Trent Weisbro made a, just an a, incredible play of, you know, of getting his arm around and swatting that ball down. And then on fourth down, where they tried a little trickery hook and ladder or whatever they're trying to do there, we felt like we had 15 guys trying to get to the ball. I think some guys cleared the sidelines to go find it. So, you know, it was uh, kids played aggressive, played hard, and and you're right, it just was big plays all over the place. Now there's one week left in the regular season. And you guys have known for weeks now that in order to make the postseason, you need to win everyone. Yep. You're one game from it. Yep. Just uh, what do you say to the guys going into this week, knowing that you know we want to be one and zero every week, but this week we need to be one and zero. You know, I, I tell you what, this week is going to be a lot easier. What to say to them? Uh, I was I was nervous about what happens. What do I, what do I say to them next week if we can't get our job done tonight and try to keep their morale up when you're playing 
maybe just to be a spoiler, or you're just playing another football game. Um, you know, this will be an easy week to keep the kids motivated because they know exactly what's on the line, and, and they know the stakes, and they, you know, they knew coming in tonight, if we didn't take care of business, that changes next week dramatically. But now it makes this week much more fun. I think our kids are going to be more focused, and I'm looking forward to giving Stoughton all they can handle. And, and to be at home, and, and the home crowd has been growing every game so far this season, just at home with the game, with, with the season on the line, just, just what will that mean to the guys? Oh, it'll, be, it'll be just a, a perfect setting, and you can't draw it up any better to, to have a situation to be able to have a, you know, a game to have a great chance to make the playoffs. I know it's not automatic by any means, but yet having – Having to do that in front of your home crowd, and, and you're right, it's been a better home crowd this year than we've seen in a lot of years, and, and it's a tribute to our kids. And uh, kid, people are recognizing the hard work that some of these kids have put, and, and they're coming to back them. And uh, so, you know, I'm really excited. Next week's our Teacher Appreciation Senior Night, where we honor our seniors, and our seniors choose a teacher from anywhere from kindergarten all the way to now that's been you know, an important part in their life during their time in school here, and honors that person during the game. Um, and then to be able to do that while we're also trying to play to get in the playoffs is just going to be, it's going to be a really exciting night Friday night. And uh, uh, what was I going to say, the, the week leading up, I mean, you, you said you don't really have to say much to them. They kind of know what they're going after. But uh, just the emotions that might be involved with that, just, I mean, you've seen teams and, and their season in the last week of the season. Just what's it going to be like to, to try to withstand those emotions here? You know, we got... I've said a lot about our seniors all year. Um, you know, if I were to look at our list of however many seniors we have, well, probably well over half of them have been elected captain at some point in time. We elect new captains every week, and they can be the same kids. They can be different kids. You know, so we've got you know, better than 10 or 11 or 12 kids that our guys look to as leaders. And then you have leaders looking upon leaders. It's just, you know, the, the, the motivation, the keeping yourself in check, that's going to happen as much from the players as it will from the coaches, you know, and, and we'll just uh, spend our time preparing and game planning for Stoughton. And, uh, you know, it should be a fun week of practice and a motivating week of practice. And, you know, I told the kids last week against Oregon, this is the biggest, most important game you're going to play in. And if we win that one, then the next one's going to be the most important game. And, and tonight was the most important game that those guys have ever played. Next week, without a doubt, that's going to be the most important game that they've ever played. And how neat to set up, set up your, your season like that and have a chance to, you know, win for something that's pretty special to a lot of people. Last year you guys were able to win at home in the final game of the season to qualify for playoffs. You didn't make the tournament bracket, but they qualified something that hasn't been done in a really long time, since 2003. This year, if you qualify, there's a good probability you guys will be in. From last year's seniors pulling off that season that they had to this year's seniors kind of continuing that and, and, and improving upon it, just how nice is it to see the program finally growing and does everybody else kind of sense that happening? Oh, I think so. I think without a doubt and I saw a lot of our kids from last year's team at homecoming last week, um, you know, to, to come back and see people but to also come and see what maybe their work has done in the following year, you know, what their efforts last year have done for some of these kids this year. And, um, you know, we got a lot of kids that are, are honoring their legacy about you know, being the first Monroe team in a while to maybe have a chance to make the playoffs, but yet they're honoring those kids that have kind of built that up for them from last year's class and the, the groups before them. So, you know, being a part of a football program is like being a part of a family, and we've always treated it that way. And it's a special thing to be a part of Monroe football. I'm sure it's a special thing to be a part of any football team. Um, but, you know, we treat it that way, and, and whatever we do, we do as a family. And, you know, hopefully we can win a football game as a family next week and, and make the playoffs.